Hi everyone, my name is Corey Metton and I am excited to bring you Perspectives by Splunk. Sean and I are here to provide you with executive takes on today's security and technology topics by leaders for leaders. And our guest today has an opinion that I think many people may share, that artificial intelligence represents what is a massive technological shift in the industry, one that may be as big as the internet. Matt Swan, why do you believe that AI is going to be quite such a large revolution? Listen, I think uh, despite all the noise that you hear and see today about, you know, generational AI, you know, I think back to 20 plus years ago when, you know, the internet evolved and immediately there was this hype cycle. And the hype cycle was, we're all going to change immediately. Everything's going to be digital immediately. And if you fast forward 20 years, we've had big winners, digital incumbents who built digital first and they've taken advantage and they've kind of won. Um, we also have a lot of incumbents that are still trying to figure out their, their digital channel. I mean, these... These cycle times have changed, they've shortened, but I think the reality of it is this is bigger and more powerful over the next 20 years, I think, than what we've experienced with internet, with cloud, kind of with mobile. It's quite a big fundamental shift there, isn't it, really, from, from you know, tw 20 years ago when the internet was around, kind of invented, to where we are today. So, Matt, maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself, your history, and maybe a little bit as to how you've come to this conclusion. Well, I mean, listen, I think that... Uh, a lot of companies have been experimenting with, you know, machine learning and data and aspects of AI for, for some time, you know, certainly for the last 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. It's influenced a ton of, of personalization and recommendations and fraud and operational, you know, things. And I think if you look at like any new technology, that business use case really hasn't changed. You know, when I wake up, if I'm a fraud company today, I'm still all about getting fraud better. You know, if I'm an operational company today, I want my operations to be better. If I want to sell more stuff, I want to sell more stuff. So AI, when I think about the evolution that we've been on in terms of getting deeper and deeper into customer information and segmentation to really tailor and personalize that, we can harness this technology to do all the things that we were doing before, but faster and better. Yeah, excellent. So you... You've had kind of a storied history in terms of roles that you've played at uh, companies. We're certainly glad to have you here at Swunk, but maybe tell the folks a little bit about kind of your previous roles and some of the ways that you've been involved in, you know, leading through technological shifts in the past as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like my entire journey has really been that of modernization. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was kind of day one at Amazon when we invented the cloud, when we decentralized the monolith to become, you know, microservices. Uh, early on when we built a lot of the first machine learning platforms and personalization to kind of tailor how people kind of bought and, and, and viewed things, that helped organizational change and all the ways that we thought about, you know, cross-functional teams and single-threaded teams and our operating models. And the fascinating thing for me was that I thought, well, that was just an Amazon phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is, you know, as the CTO or CIO at, at regulated incumbents like uh, Citibank or Booking, or, or newer, more digital players like neobanks, like Nubank, those same patterns have all applied themselves. Those needs all still exist. Yeah. So when we think about, you know, AI as a revolution, one of the most important things that we're trying to, to flush out for folks and really having a lot of conversations around the world is, you know, what does it mean for technology leaders today? So like in your mind, just at a, at a top level, what is, what is leading in a revolution like this really look like? Yeah, well, I think anytime there's a major shift and you recognize it, and you see value in it, you need to really embrace it. You need to make it part of your culture. You know, and that means, uh, you know, embedding the right goals and incentives. It means the right education. Uh, it means the right inspection mechanism so that when you say, hey, listen, you know, there was a famous, you know, my days at Amazon, we, we produced our annual plans, you know, every year. And sometimes the questions changed. And if there was a popular topic like AI, what are you doing about AI? You know, and every team had to answer that question. How am I morphing or evolving my product? How are you inspecting what you're doing, what your advantages are, what your disadvantages are, and how do you iterate through that? Because it's not all gonna get solved in one, one period, right? We're gonna look at this over time, and the ones that focus on it, make it part of their culture, they're the ones that are gonna win and make it better. It's really interesting, isn't it? 
So I, I wonder, maybe you can share your opinion on what do you think this means around people, maybe talent and recruitment strategies, both now and in the future? Yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, I think it's a little early. I think what, uh, you know, there's a lot of fear and kind of gloom and doom in the hype cycle. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think you could say that about a lot of automation that's happened over the last 20 years. There's no question a lot of jobs may get simpler or more enriched by the data that comes out of AI. I think we're going to go through a period of where we are more supervised to less supervised in terms of human involvement, you know, kind of in those things. Um, but I think there's just no substitute uh, for their, well, you know, who knows on a long enough time frame. I think for it to literally displacing everything. That's right. But I think what we're going to see in the next 20 years is there are going to be a lot of jobs that are going to be created that are both higher value working on the development of AI and those things. Mm -hmm. There are gonna be a lot of jobs that become more open or available because AI makes it easier. I no longer have to find the deep specialist that does that thing because AI can assist that person to help get them to the task. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of a wild thing that this, uh, you talked about the hype cycle and that people are going, oh, I'm gonna lose my job, like we should all run for the hills. And I think it's one of those that we have to be thoughtful about what are the skills that we're going to try to develop over the future. And I think the lump of labor fallacy is kind of the best way to explain it. Like about any new technology, it's not that we're necessarily deleting as many jobs as we're creating, which I think is a kind of a fundamental you know, change in people's mindset that anytime you have this big change, you don't have to be scared. It's just a shift. So as we're going through that shift, if you're thinking about, you know, cybersecurity leaders, technology leaders, what are some of the practical ways? You talked about culture as like a high level, but like what are some of the practical things that you're seeing some of those great technology leaders, those great cybersecurity leaders do now that's helpful? Well, I mean, listen, I think you have to plan for where you need speed and where you need augmentation, mm -hmm. you know, in your teams and systems. I think there are things where this technology can take your existing staff and team and help accelerate their time to detection, mm -hmm. their time to recovery, you know, and, and by the way, it's interesting. There's a lot of this uh, AI that's being produced and trained off public data sets, mm -hmm. and that's fine, and you can learn and come and grow from that. I think the real power comes from these platforms of private data sets, and when you begin to build on that to automate how you make things operate better, how you make them recover better, mm -hmm. how you find and detect security issues better. But again, that comes back to that core mission. You have to make, your mission hasn't changed. Yeah. You're a security company, right? You're an operations company, you're a fraud company. And so how do you leverage that technology to automate and expedite that path to resilience? You know, and, yeah. and inevitably, as we all know, in e-commerce, we didn't close down the physical stores. With mobile, we didn't give away all our computers. You know, with, with AI, all the jobs are probably not going to go away. That's true. It's a great way of describing it. <laughs> yeah. So there are, there are so many different opportunities maybe with AI today and, and coming in the future. For a leader, it's really hard to understand what they need to invest in next. So do you have any advice? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think it's not just AI. If you're a leader in this decade, in this century, the learning never stops. <laughs> and you know it is only accelerated, and I think it's, AI is only going to accelerate it further. I think you have to look to your network. You look to have to not to make yourself smart, who are your network or your mentors that you trust? Who are the people on your team that you're going to listen to that are closest to this? Who are the vendors that have built a competence in this that can help establish the patterns of the products that help you kind of integrate, you know, and, and kind of do more? Look, if you're an innovator and a founder, what's the company you want to build to be AI or, you know, kind of digital first? But I think you need to take and talk to these people talk to the venture capitalists, talk to the private equity folks, and make an assessment based on principles and tenets, what's important to you and your business, mm -hmm. and then kind of weigh out where does this begin to fit in so that I can test and learn and evolve and kind of advance the ball. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, you know, one of the things that's been super popular, you talked about it earlier, this generative AI, right? That's the thing that really burst onto the consciousness of the, the common person right out there. While many of us have been working in AI research and, you know, big data, these things for years and years. But, you know, one of the things that they're, you know, that they're thinking is it's like, it's just, it's, you're going to automate everything. AI is going to take over. But I don't feel like that's true. Like, do you believe that human in the loop is the right answer now? And like, how far in the future is that real full AI automation going to happen? 
Look, I, I, I can't predict. I thought that's why you were here. <laughs> I would. I'd, I'd be in the market a little bit more. That's right. I think that, um, look, there's no question we're on an arc or continuum mm -hmm. that with an increase in compute power and capacity, yeah. with an increase in data and the curation and the governance of that data, and the increase in the learning and the aptitude that we have in terms of our ability to ingest and kind of forward these things, more will be automated, yeah. more will become. And so the world will be a different place. Is it going to be a different place next week or next month? Yeah. Absolutely not. I think you have to look at over time, these, gen these shifts are generational. Yeah. And even though we're seeing the hype cycle of, oh, but this, however many, is this AI's tool launched and that launched and this kind of launch. Yeah. Think about it like um, there's a famous story that uh, Bezos used to tell that the turn of the century when automobiles were made, there were hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of automobile makers. Mm -hmm. And most of them failed. And you bridge down to the top kind of three or four, which became the real winners and succeeders kind of in this space, mm -hmm. right? Those were kind of day one companies. And I think if you look at the thing or the internet, there were so many companies and so much hype. And then through the late 90s, so much of that failed and contracted. And was, but again, there was a concentration of winners and things that have carried forward. Yeah. You could say the same thing with cloud, with mobile, with various aspects of business. Yeah. I don't think AI is going to be too much different than that. Maybe we're on a slightly faster cycle, but this is going to be a generational shift. Great. So you touched on culture earlier. Let's dive into that a bit, bit more here. With the world likely to be a very different place in maybe a decade or so's time with, it, with the invention and driver of AI, what cultural changes do you think we now need to embed into our organizations today and tomorrow to make that shift happen over the next decade? Well, I mean, the good news is <laughs> our kids are going to take care of it. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna be smarter than we are. They're going to be so faster true. than we are. <laughs> and they're going to lap us in, in kind of in no time. Yeah. I think, though, the way that I think about, you know, look, I've got a daughter and sons, and uh, I think about one's a software engineer, one's finishing up kind of in, in, in school, and I think the things that I would have told them to think about studying and investing in a few years ago have changed, yeah. you know, and I think the way you think about data and data intelligence and or machine learning and what goes into those things, if there's an interest... I think there's going to be a lot more value. I think there's going to be a lot more job creation and things in those areas. Because, look, it's been easy for Adobe and a number of companies to augment their products to quickly produce a thing. Look at the broad swath of everything that would have to be automated. Yeah. It's just going to take time. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the, the key goals that we had when we set out to do this Perspectives uh, both the website and this podcast was really a way to help make sure that we're able to help leaders stay abreast of the latest sort of trends and technologies that are happening in cybersecurity and across IT and engineering. So I'm curious as a, as a leader, what's like your go-to resource? I know you mentioned earlier, right? Having a great network and having mentors and folks that you trust, but is there, is there any like sort of either, you know, a mailing list or like a website, like is there your favorite resource that you use to stay abreast of things? And if you say TikTok, it's fine. <laughs> it's, it, 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 I'm embarrassingly not a TikTok user. Yeah, I probably should be. I would probably know more about AI if I did. Uh, probably how to start a business. I think the uh, look. I'm I'm happy to share some of this kind of offline. Yeah, I don't. I sure. they don't kind of come to mind. Kind yeah, of out that. I do have a handful of uh, of podcasts mm -hmm. of, of newsletters and things that. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say I follow, they're not my playbook for, yeah. oh, I must go do and follow this. Yeah. But they inspire me when I learn about the things that others are doing and the creative things that I thought weren't possible mm -hmm. and how I might apply them to a business. And so I think it's up to everyone to build their own, again, network of people, yeah. digital resources, right, across the internet and all of these things, you know, and companies to help understand who is your mini board of advisors on AI. Yeah, absolutely. Build that board of advisors. Well, Matt, thank you so much for joining us, having this chat about leading through AI. I hope you all learned quite a bit uh, from the minds of leaders. And that's the goal with Splunk's perspectives is to curate what's happening uh, in technology and, se and security for executives. So be sure to check out splunk.com forward slash perspectives for more. Thanks for joining. I'm Corey Minton. We'll see you soon. Be sure to subscribe to the show on whatever platform you're currently using. If you're listening and you want to watch the show, check out YouTube. 
And if you're watching, but you'd prefer to listen, check out the Perspectives podcasts wherever you find your podcasts. Speaking of podcasts, you should also check out the Security Detail podcast by Audra Streetman and Kirsty Payne. They explore cyber threats across a variety of industries with some of the most trusted names in cybersecurity. And don't forget to check out splunk.com forward slash perspectives for blogs featuring the latest executive takes on today's security and technology topics by leaders and for leaders. Thanks for listening.